differently because when we were here last time and we were um, hearing about um, global citizenship in the UN, we could be Hass teachers, we could see a direct link with Hass. So we actually incorporated it with our Year 10 Hass unit, and we did it over three terms, culminating in Term 4 with a presentation evening where the students set up information stalls. So um, it was actually taught as part of our Year 12, sorry, our Year 10 course all year. Um, and we took out weeks as we went to actually just focus on the project. Um, students were essentially required to identify a local community issue or problem and they were to implement a positive change. So it was extremely broad in scope and um, some students went down the whole sort of STEM line, others did more like a community project and um, implemented a course of action. Um, we set our students into groups of three and essentially they set the project over three terms um, and we, in our program, actually um, sectioned off weeks where they would actually just do project work with the, within their groups. So I think term one we did four weeks, not all in a block, we did a week here and two weeks there and the idea was for each of those weeks they actually had um, actions and criteria that they had to take and sort of check off so they were constantly checking in with us. Um, we did come last week, last year, and steal several of your uh, suggestions, and we, we ran with those. So our project was based very much on the design thinking model as well, and we found that particularly useful. Um, one of our issues was that we believed that next year, when we do it again, we'd actually spend more time with students actually teaching that model, because we felt that we didn't give that enough time, and we had a few little issues with that. Um, our whole focus carrying out the actual project and what we kept reiterating to students, it wasn't actually about the end goal, it was actually about the process. And um, we constantly had to remind them of that because they were very hung up on success or, or not success. So it was constantly, it's about the process. Um, we took the advice from last year and we actually had students checking in with a blog. So we used edgy blogs. And we actually found that really um, helpful because it's all um, it's built in for students, so it's got all the security measures in place. So that's that was our reason for going with that. It's a bit slow and clunky, but it, it worked fine. So um, that's one that we could recommend. Um, each blog, once again, we had criteria that they actually had to meet as well, and they had to sort of check it off. So it was very specific. This blog, we need to see this. We went with the idea of smart goals for each blog, and that worked really well for us. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, constantly in each blog, we were getting students to identify blocks, we called them blocks. So things that hadn't worked out, that was a, a significant part of the process. And then we wanted to see, and what solutions did you come up with to overcome those blocks? So um, we noticed that several student groups, their, their um, project sort of bounced around and, and, and constantly changed and what they initially started was very different to the end product. Um, if I could just jump in there, I would advise people taking it on. Ours is a little bit different to your scenario because ours was embedded in our actual mandated program. So you have to really write your programs, rewrite as has to, we need to completely kind of completely pull our problems apart and we need to marry all the subjects. So we didn't teach a semester of history or geography, you know, it was all interlinked where it matched. Mm -hmm. But you have to be creative too, because they're young and they've hit a block. So they come to you and you have to be good at critical thinking, you know, to really spread them out because especially if they go down the old people's road, um, there's a lot of blocks. They're very young and a lot of agencies are not interested. So my one of my groups only got to actually achieve something at the end of term three and now they're actually feeling good about it. But you have to be that resilience is massive for this program mm -hmm. for the students. And you have to tell them, it's, you have to, I had to reinforce and reinforce because I had several groups who hit a wall because they're, you know, they're not all academic at all. Mm -hmm. And of course, ours don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. This is a major yeah. project that we're doing as part of this extension class. So um, you, do, you do have to be prepared to put a lot of work in there. It's, so when they're in class doing the project, you learn your hour. Because they, they, they all want you, they all in, and it's very important to have that feedback with them. We don't do it after school. It's all done in, in our school hours. You mentioned that you did an academic extension. Are you considering rolling it out? Maybe? No. It's too big. Yeah. No. It really takes time. 
yeah, it has to be a, a teacher, I think, that feels dedicated and passionate about, about the cause itself. Um, I don't think it's something you could ask a um, teacher that doesn't have a lot of feeling to sort of give up their time. Um, <laughs> so um, that, that's one of the, uh, I guess, staffing issues which I don't have to deal with. But. And you need your club support because there are things like getting the names, put in, putting the names into scouts. I remember to get that done on time, sending in your application, your justification, your program, getting that right, also meeting the mandated documentation, then getting in the results into scouts by the deadline, then sending the results to, you know, I'm just saying, it's not just in the classroom you're doing it, so we went into it, we're pretty full, we're not very tight, <laughs> Maybe that's because we're hassers, but that's how we survived. If you want to know what you're doing, bang, 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 this is probably going to be, for us, that would be too difficult. We went with the floor with the kids. Where the kids took us, we went and we adapted rather than pulling them back in. Just go with it and see where it takes you. Justine and Caroline, can I ask a question uh, from my observation? One of my observations that that fantastic presentation night you ran, it struck me that these kids were now uh, going well beyond the classroom and wanting to do things in the school that then involved them negotiating with the business manager and maybe even the principal and so on. Have you had any pushback or feedback from the school saying, hey, this is too much? Or what sort of um, outcome there? It's actually, um, the presentation evening was, was um, very Positive, and Carolyn was very political, and we made sure we invited all the right people. <laughs> so they were on side. We're getting hammered by STEM. Sorry, <laughs> so, I've got to fight back. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's been it's been very positive, and parents um, lots and lots of positive feedback that way. And then, of course, once admin hears that the parents are happy, then they don't really care what you're doing. <laughs> type scenario. You're selling it. So yeah, it's yeah. So our business managers. She's very positive. Yeah, and, and we did get lots of support from our admin, to be fair, um, right, yeah. right from the start. Um, that's that's one thing I've got down for my advice, and we've discussed this. Yep. Early on next year, we're actually going to um, put out a bit of a, a survey to parents to actually pull our parents and see what um, skills and experts we've got in our parent body, because yeah. they're amazing contacts. And from that night, two parents came up to me and said, I didn't know, I could have, and we weren't aware that that was a resource that we hadn't tapped into. So I would do that very early on, just to find out what you've got in the school. Um, the other thing we've got down as advice is to get students to identify their helpers and their contacts very early on. So a lot of them will need to actually make contact with the outside community groups. That should be done way earlier than later, because sometimes it took, I think, six months yep. for the shark expert to get back. We did get back, and it was fantastic. But yeah, do that that earlier on, um, and any sort of activity, because a couple of our <coughs> groups went with the fundraising, um, needs to be done earlier rather than later. So um, yeah. yeah, the students that sort of got in and organised something quickly, although don't rush the process by any means, they actually had more luck completing something by this presentation evening that we had and I think they were feeling a, a whole lot better on the evening being able to show that mm. they did mm. achieve. Mm. Excellent. Sorry, did, um, did all groups have to present? Yes. Yes, so they were, we set up like stalls. Um, the presentation evening actually went really well and it was, um, it was intense for about an hour and a half but then it was done or dusted. So we had each group with a stall and we got parents to actually, we identified where, what groups we wanted parents to go to because we didn't want parents to actually go to their own student. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually were given a sheet and they marked the sheet and the sheet was given back to the students as feedback mm -hmm. about their presentation. The um, presentation evening, once again, we were very, um, very much stipulated what we wanted. So we had them doing a reflection brochure, um, which they actually handed and that was what they learned about the experience. Um, they had to have some sort of uh, visual, uh, IT preferably, that was rolling through so that if they were talking with someone, their other audience is being involved. And then, of course, we wanted the actual stalls to be inviting, so they needed to sort of consider audience interest and 
sort of, you know, help people to come up and feel welcome and that sort of thing. And, and I thought it was really successful. It was. Yeah. And now, they won't all get there, but the thing I just ran recently was a, we uh, put them back in as a bit of a, okay, guys, let's review this. I said, what, what positives can we now, you know, say? And uh, they started slowly. I'd like technology. And she kept us going when we were failing. I'd like, and they started then that gratification, and um, it was good because students acknowledged I was slack. So you know, I'd like to thank my two partners because they actually got us through. And there was that. That is a very good thing at the end because that's really the kids being honest, and, and I got that out of them. So especially on some levels. Well, I think we met a couple of those. 62. 62. Mm. It was a massive undertaking. I can see how you had to put in a lot of extra effort to make that work. We will be yeah. next year. So, yeah. Nine. Sorry. Sorry, I, I just thought there were 90. 90? Three, three classes. Three classes. Three classes. Wow. You can't not let, because they're all on the same course. Can we talk about your assessment? How about it? So, well, so it was it was a blog that was handed in. I think I, all up we had four blogs yeah. that they handed in, and each blog actually had um, certain criteria. Unfortunately, I didn't bring anything with me, but I know the first blog, um, and we followed your advice about really important that students define the problem before they look at solutions. Um, so as part of that blog, they actually had to put together a survey. Um, carry out their survey and then the um, findings of the survey were within the blog. So that was just one tiny aspect of the blog, but the four blogs became their assessment um, and there was criteria that they needed to check off each blog. Could you specifically go through like an act to reflect what the four, there's a few different They had a marking so key. Exactly, yeah. focusing on yeah, yeah. So each blog, apart from the last one, obviously had a yeah. SMART goals, which um, worked well. I, I'm, um, and a student, we did allocate, it was three in a group, so the first one was done together, but after that each person in the group had a responsibility. So that helped us with the marking as well. If someone was slack, that was the blog that went down. That person carried it, not the other two students. Okay, so there's still an individual element. You have to. Yeah. When you're not giving them a choice, you kind of have to allow that. But that works well with you ladies too, that 50% individual. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Tim. Yes, well, um, first of all, a disclaimer from us. Our two main driving teachers for this project, specifically with the UN project, our first lives with our science teacher, and Johanna, who's our HAS teacher. Neither of them are here right now. Um, but I teach health, and I'm also the team leader for the poet. My Laura teaches maths, and what we found was um, we had a, a whole school um, focus, a sustainability action plan that had been initiated um, prior to us um, joining on with this program. Um, and our uh, pedagogista, who's in charge of PD throughout the school and, and sort of coordinating all the classes, already was um, using the sustainability goals or the global goals to um, frame that sustainability action plan throughout the school. So really, we started with a whole school approach and what all the different classes were doing. So previously, Maura and Ursula had worked on a whole school um, waste audit. Um, so they already identified that you know, the, the fruit and vegetables waste was by far our biggest um, throwing away. So there was already talk about you know, um, recycling and um, composting there. Um, we instigated just this year, it's been a very big year for us, we, we kicked off our permaculture certificate too. Oh, actually, I that last year. Yeah, second year with um, that, with, with the UN course. Um, we've also been running for a couple of years a certificate four in design with our year 11 and 12 program. Um, and so we, we were looking at a link between our arts program, which is a very big focus in our school, um, throughout the whole school, they do a whole day of arts. And then linking it through our year nine and 10 our program up towards our design school. So this course and, and the wonderful examples that we gave last time really inspired us to look for that missing link as a, as a whole school journey, if you like. 
um, and looking at the design process through the arts and through the new end course up into, up into this program and into the certificate for in design. So essentially we, we approached it as a year nine and 10 program, linking it with the permaculture course through the, the waste audit and um, the sustainability goals, but also linking it to um, our whole school sustainability action plan. Um, primarily, let's see. So, so I guess to start off with, we had a big focus on what actually the goals were. So through the HASS curriculum, um, was very strongly influenced. So we looked at the um, where the United Nations came from, the foundation of the United Nations, um, from the Second World War, and um, where the goals came from. Um, in science, um, they you know looked at biomes and um, biodiversity, biodiversity, coastal plains and ecosystems, global systems. Um, and so what we found, I guess, was that for a lot of our students, they they really uh, lacked a really deep understanding of, of a lot of these goals and issues and ideas and things. So we actually spent a huge amount of time just investigating the goals, looking at one at a time, what they mean, you know, how um, those, um, I think you talked about the, the targets and indicators and things like that, looking deeply at them. Um, again, playing lots of games and things like that. And then um, looking at the things that were being initiated in our own school. Like the, um, the permaculture they um, were looking at the, the composting and things like that. This our year, the permaculture students two years ago worked with City Farm, and so they have a very impressive uh, recycling facility, so that was one of our inspirations there. So that knowledge came in as well into the project. I suppose we also spent a lot of time immersing the students um, into a goal, so we spent a lot of time um, on goal six, I think, clean water and sanitization. And, you know, the students were reading a novel um, about about it. So English was involved and um, we did a, a STEM activity um, on filtering water um, where the students were in groups and they all had, they were all part of a different country and they were only allocated a certain amount of money to buy resources. So we looked at um, how it works globally as well and how um, richer countries and poorer countries kind of need to work together so everyone has access to clean water. Um, and then we partnered with World Vision and we did the Global 6K for Water event where uh, it kind of simulates uh, third world countries where they have to walk a long way to get water so the students kind of built the empathy based on, on that. So they got really involved in organising the event themselves and then involving the community and um, getting the younger students, the primary students involved and the families involved in supporting the course. So you know, you know, building um, awareness of um, how different it is in, in third world countries and how that needs to be um, equal sort of thing. So yeah, so that was really huge. We spent a whole term, I think, on, on that one goal. So really immersing the students so that they get into the goals a bit deeper and not just on the surface level. <coughs> uh, similarly, we also did um, goal 10, which was reduced inequalities, and we looked specifically at migration and uh, the refugee crisis in Australia. Um, again, partnering with World Vision, we did the 40-hour backpack challenge, 40-hour famine, um, and the students, um, you know, spelled the whole term learning about policies in Australia and then moved into experiencing it for themselves. Um, there was a situation about if there was an earthquake in Australia, what would you do? Um, and then, you know, living out of your backpack for 40 hours, which, you know, really stuck with them because you can learn about it and you can read stories, but doing it for yourself is really huge. Um, and then leading from those um, immersive pro uh, you know, projects, I suppose, the students were then able to look at the goals and um, <coughs> choose a project for themselves. So they only started their own personal projects in term three. Um, and so they're kind of just in the process now of um, you know, uh, bringing it up to the community and, and to the principal and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we really jumped in with uh, integrating it across the different subjects. So in English, they read a novel called Hope Street about immigrant families. Um, and we, um, as part of our health and PE, we did a collaboration with the West Australian Ballet, where we went and did, I was part of the year 11-12 program also in PE, but with the, with the middle schoolers, 
um, we go into provocation about um, what it's like to, to leave your home, what it means to be at home. So a lot of so work with a choreographer there and um, came up with a, the students got in groups and came up with a bunch of little moves about um, what home meant to them. You know, they did some brainstorming and things and then they came up with some little moves and then the choreographer helped us put it into a little performance, um, which was really amazing. Um, and then, so again, so through the English connection, they, did, they wrote poems as well really, about the refugee experience from what they learned from TED Talks and things like that. And as part of our arts festival, um, they worked with the art specialists as well. So they did, some of them did live readings of their poems, some of them recreated little scenes. And that was part of our um, on the school um, arts integration as well. So, so in that way, the younger students in here, so probably just to go way back, um, our senior school consists of two classes. Year seven, eight, and nine is our middle school, which is about um, 25 students. And we've got a similar number in year 10, 11, and 12, which is our college. So we saw it as an opportunity to get our nines and tens together to create sort of three groups just to mix mm. up their experience and get to know each other. And so the UN focused really around that hub of our nines and tens and the permaculture, but it also bled quite naturally out into all the other groups and also across the school where the, um, the students were presenting to the younger students, particularly with the, with the nature-based thing. So through HASS, there's so many things, sorry. Um, they also looked at um, environmental worldviews, um, you know, different biomes and technology, um, plant blindness, what Johanna called it, about um, all these plants around us that we don't understand what they are and how they, and how they work to sustain us and, and all of those sort of things. Um, and also investigating the book Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe about um, native plants and um, indigenous farming and cultivation and things like that. So they did some uh, replanting in the school as part of that. Um, and so what we found was there were so many things going on that we really dived right in and did all these things across the school. When it came to the project, the students kind of went, ah! You know, couldn't pick something or they didn't really find a connection. So once we got into the projects, narrowing it down was a big thing. And it was always a chance of the, um, the design process um, versus the, the, the content and the exploration and the experience of all these right. different things. Um, and then most of the assessments then came through the, the different subject areas. So through, whether it was through health and PE, or through the house, or through the science, or through the maths. Um, and a lot of documentation to, to share. So to my understanding is you're, that's continuing then into next year, so you're running the program over two years. Yes, yep. yes. So, yep. um, we're hoping that for our year nines and tens it will just be something yep. that they share that will link, okay. will link their sort of um, middle school experience to their college experience. Yep. Okay. And they have the, you know, the chance to continue on in year 11 and 12 if they want, if they want to continue their project with the, the set form of design. Yes. So that's a good way yeah. to, to continue. They're just getting into it and they run out of time. That there's obviously I feel like once they get their passion project, the earlier we start with that kind of idea, understanding of the world and their place and what they're really passionate about, once they bring that to the certificate four, then they're really ready to run with it. It's exactly right. what you guys were talking about, those innovation day presentations where you do your elevator pitch. They're doing that with, with Hass in, with the year sevens and eights. It's um, should make it a much bigger part of the UN um, in it because they certainly do that design course as well. So these things just, they're a common language, I think, that links everything together yeah. in a really nice way. Any other questions? So do you mind me asking about your assessments? They, they were the tasks, the forms, the... Yes, the thing, the, correct. How did you find the marking those when you're especially there? Oh, no, the English teacher marks the poems. Oh, okay. No, so yeah. she, she did poetry as part of the English curriculum, but it just happened to be um, on the refugee experience. So they looked at some TED Talks and some and experiences, and they had their emotional response to those. So you're working as a team to do that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're a pretty tight team. Yeah. How large is your school? Good question. So there's, I think, 200 students approximately from early childhood all the way up to year 12. Yep. Um, Numbers-wise, we're more or less a single stream, um, but all our classes are multi-age uh, across the school quite deliberately. So we only have, even if, let's say, even if we had whole cohort of year seven, we would still have year seven, eight, or year seven, nine, because the multi-aging is really important. 
We've just got a quick video to show you about the regeneration project that was led by... Since Johanna's not here to talk about it. <laughs>